Hello and welcome to Bun Med, where we discuss concise medical knowledge that you can fit inside of a bun. In this video, we're going to be having a look at exactly what hemolytic uremic syndrome is, how it fits into this thing that's known as the microangiopathic hemolytic anemias, and as well as that, how it may present and what we may do to treat it. We know that hemolytic refers to the fact that we're going to have breakdown of our red cells. Uremic refers to a state known as uremia, where we have lots and lots of buildup of nitrogenous waste products in our blood, usually due to renal dysfunction. So we know in hemolytic uremic syndrome, or HUS, this is going to be where we have lots of breakdown of our red cells and something to do with renal dysfunction. So what actually is HUS? Well, in actuality, it's actually an infective disease, and it's infection with a very specific strain of E. coli, known as the 0157H7. And it usually starts uh, and usually occurs in children. Now, it often starts with contaminated foods. And when we eat it, we get infected by the E. coli bug, which often very early on causes a bloody diarrhea. Following this, the actual toxin released by the uh, E. coli can actually damage our endothelium. And damaging of the endothelium form uh, leads to the formation of platelet clots. And as well as the clots, the fibrin sheath. Now you can see how we've set up a very, very similar situation to last time where passing red cells get split in half. And thus we have the uh, hemolytic component. These clots can then get deposited in the small blood vessels, leading to a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. And this tends to affect the kidneys much more often than any neurological symptoms in children. So what kind of symptoms are we going to see? Well, the symptoms are mainly going to be exactly that uh, of what we saw in things uh, of thrombocytopenia. So things like um, spontaneous bruising, purpuric rashes. Again, we're going to see symptoms of anemia, jaundice from the fact that we're getting hemolysis. But the differentiating factor here is that it's preceded by this bloody diarrhea because we have eaten um, the E. coli toxin. So what sort of investigations are we going to do? Well, because as you can see, the pathology is somewhat similar in terms of the end point to um, TTP. The investigations are very similar. So we start off with a full blood count, which shows the normal cytic, uh, anemia and a thrombocytopenia. Again, our uh, reticulocytes are raised because this is a hemolytic anemia and our direct Coombs test is negative because it's not autoimmune. Blood film will show these helmet shaped schistocytes. And finally, our urinalysis and eusinase will show renal dysfunction. But the thing that will help us really get to the bottom of whether this is HUS or not is to do a stool culture for the E. coli 0157H7 bug or PCR to find the E. coli um, toxin. Finally, in terms of management, we want to mainly look at uh, supportive management. So this includes giving things like giving fluids if they're really, really deficient in um, red blood cells giving a blood transfusion, and potentially dialysis if the kidney failure is end stage. That concludes the video. Hope you guys found it useful. Please feel free to share and subscribe. And if you have any comments, leave them below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. See you in the next one.